This is the first section uh, on the chapter sequences and series. And this is all about arithmetic sequences. Now an arithmetic sequence is just one that goes up and down by a fixed number each time. So for example, if I had five, uh, 11, 17, 23, yeah, what we can see is that this one goes up in sixes. Yeah, now what really makes a sequence is the first term and the jump between each number. They're the most important things because if you know what the start term is and you know what the jump is between each sequence, whether that goes up or down, then you can generate the whole sequence. Now, because those numbers are so important, we give them uh, a special letter. So the first term, we're going to refer to as A, since it's the first letter of the alphabet. So the first term of any arithmetic uh, sequence, we're going to refer to as A. And the jump between, so let's put first term, the jump between each value, whether it's positive or negative, we're going to refer to as D. Now you think, well, why D? Well, D is the first letter. Well, it's not really the first letter but we talk about the common difference. So the common difference. So the D comes from difference. And that common difference could be that you're adding a value, you're taking away a value. So that common difference could be positive or negative, whether, uh, depending on whether your sequence goes up or down. And it's an arithmetic sequence if this difference is constant. If this difference is changing, it's not an arithmetic sequence. So in an arithmetic sequence, the difference between terms, difference between consecutive terms, consecutive terms, is constant and we refer to that constant difference using the letter d now you remember the nth term rule from gcse we've got something very similar just using um, different notation so from gcse we talked about the nth term and or the nth term rule so um, for the sequence that I've got here, that would be, um, well, the first term is five and it's going up in sixes. So you remember you'll do something like six N cause it's going up in sixes and it'll be six N minus one. And that would give you the nth term rule for this sequence. Now a level we use a slightly different notation and we use uh, the general notation is un equals a plus n minus one d. So in a GCSE one, if I wanted to generate, let's say for example, the third term of the sequence, then I would do six times three minus one and I get 17, you can see up here. Over here, with this slightly different notation, so A is my first term, D is the common difference there, and N is the term I want to find. So I would actually write the third term, we'd write as U3, term number three, and then it's going to be the first term, which is five, plus how many differences? Uh, well, if I'm trying to find a third term, so it'll be just two differences, three minus one times by D, and that difference is six. You'll see I'll get the same answer. Yeah, five plus 12, basically, so I get 17. So it's the same answer, but we're interested in this notation. So we we'll refer to terms as U. So U1 would be the first term, U2 second, U3 would be the third term. And the way that we work that out, it's gonna be the first term 
plus um, a certain number of differences. And actually the number of differences you add is one less than the term number because the first term is just the first time it's added. There's no differences added to that. The second term is the first term plus one difference. The third term is the first term plus two differences. The third term is the first term plus three differences. So you can see that the term number um, is made up of the first term plus um, one less of that term number differences. So using this new notation, let's uh, answer this question. So if I want to work out the first five terms, I've been given this nth term rule. Um, uh, so the first five terms u1 would just be 55 minus 2 times 1. So that's going to be 55 minus 2, which is 53. u2 sounds like an Irish band, doesn't it? 55 minus 2 times 2 for the second term. So that's going to be 55 minus 4 is 51. U3, 55 minus 2 times 3. So it's going to be 46, sorry, 49. You can see each term is going down by 2, isn't it? Which is what we'd expect, negative 2n. And U5. 55 minus 2 times 5 so that's got to be 45 so there we go we've got our first five terms work out a 99th term that's the advantage with an nth term rule is that you can find any number in the sequence uh, without having to work out all the terms in front so u99 is going to be 55 minus 2 times 99 now i know 2 times 99 is 198 but i don't know what that is going to be, I reckon it's something like negative 53. Let me just check. Oh, minus 143. So I was way off. So, oh yeah, because you're taking almost 200 off, aren't you? So minus 143 or negative 143. Uh, find the first term of the sequence that's neg negative. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to solve this inequality. When there's this, go below zero. So we'll, we'll so solve it by um, adding, uh, taking away 55 from both sides. So we'll have negative 2a is less than 55. Now we need to divide both sides by negative 2. Now remember, when you divide an inequality or multiply an inequality by a negative number, you must reverse the sign. So here I'll have n the less than changes to greater than negative 55 divided by negative 2. So that gives me n is greater than, so I think that's uh, 27.5. Yeah, so n is 27.5 when it's greater than 27.5. So basically, going back to the question, the first term that's negative, well, it's the first term where n is greater than 27.5. And because n can only be a whole number, the first whole number we're going to get is 28. So it's the 28th term is the first one to become negative. And we could check that. We could do 55 minus uh, 2 times 28. I get negative 1. If I do 55 times by... Uh, 2 times 27, which would have been a term before, I get a, a term which is positive. So the 28th term is the first one to become negative, and that 28th term actually is negative 1. Find the nth term of each of these, uh, each arithmetic sequence. Now we're going to do this the A level way, not the GCSE way. So um, we need two things we need A. The first term in the first one is 6 and D, the common difference. Um, that's going to be 14. Now remember the nth term rule we write like this, UN first term plus N minus 1 
D. So we can now substitute those in. So for A, the empty term rule is going to be UN equals A, which is 6, plus N minus 1 times by 14. We're probably more likely to write it, write it like this, 6 plus 14 n minus 1. We could expand the brackets, but we, we don't need to. We can leave it like that. And part B, so the first term A is 101. D, the common difference, it's going down by uh, 7, I think. Yeah, so D is negative 7. So again, just put it into the formula. UN equals A, which is 101 plus n minus 1 times by d which is negative 7 so if we sort of just tied it up a bit so we've got 101 minus 7 n minus 1 so we could leave it like that so a sequence is generated by this formula which is just the nth term rule which we're using now nth term rule um, where we need to find the values of a and b and we're told that u3 is 5 u8 is 20 so in other words the third term is equal to 5 and the eighth term is equal to 20 so if i'm given two bits of information i should be able to write two equations solve them simultaneously and find the two unknowns a and b so how can i write the third term well using the notation at the top the third term which we're told is five is going to be a times n now a n is three so three a so that's like a times n plus b which we don't know so there's my first equation how can i write the eighth term well the eighth term is 20 so that's going to be n8, 8a plus b. All right, so now we can solve these simultaneously. So I will probably write the 20 minus 8a one at the top. Uh, 20, I'll write it the other way around. So I've got 8a plus b equals 20. Uh, 3a plus b equals 5. I'm going to subtract. So that gives me 5a equals uh, 15. So that means that a equals 3. What I'm going to do now, I'll probably substitute that into this one. So if I do that, I will get 3 times 3 plus b equals 5. So 9 plus b equals 5. b equals 5 minus 9. So b is minus 4. So there's my other value here. So you could write the nth term rule now with both those bits of information as u n equals 3 n minus 4 and you know if we had time in the exam you might want to check yourself right is that correct so let's do a quick check you don't need to do this this is just if you had time in an assessment so let's work out the third term and the eighth term and see if we get 5 and 20 respectively so third term so u3 using what i've worked out should be three times 3 n is 3 minus 4 which is 9 minus 4 which is 5 so that works out right and let's do u8 and that would be 3 times 8 minus 4 which is 24 minus 4 which is 20 so that works out right so we've got the right answer which is here Right, you should now be able to do exercise 3a on pages 61 to 62 of the Pure 2 textbook.